everybody. So here we are again talking about the key components to a safe and effective workout. And just as important as your warm up and the body of your exercise is your cool down and your final stretch. So you notice in your warm up that your movements are light and dynamic. You move through them with your breath. But when you start to cool your body down, bring your heart rate down and cool your muscles down, you're gonna slow your stretches down. We're gonna do them in a more static fashion, which means we'll get into a position and hold it for a few breaths. Um, stretching is not intended to hurt you, right? If you get into a stretch and it feels stressful to your body, you're gonna back away from it a little bit. You just wanna find your point of resistance where your muscles start to pull back against you, get comfortable with it, know where that is, and then over the course of time, you wanna think about maybe increasing your range of motion into your stretches, getting a little bit more flexible, all right? So working through our lower body here. Get yourself out toward the front of your chair with a nice tall posture, your shoulders hanging down the back of your body, and you're still gonna have your abdominals braced in gently, right? just to stabilize your back and your hips and your pelvis. So let's start by lacing our hands up behind this, this right leg and lifting it up. Good, now we're gonna rotate the foot and the ankle. Right. So that is a movement, a little bit more dynamic exercise, but it feels good to work the range of motion. Just try to draw big circles with your toes there. Right. Good, now plantar flexion is toes reaching down toward the floor. So thinking about the stretch for your shin, the front of your ankle and your foot. Dorsiflexion is toes pressing toward the ceiling. So you feel more of a stretch through your calf. Good, now press your foot forward. Show me the sole of your foot and then bend your knee. Let's move through it like that a couple of more times just to find your range of motion. All right, where do you feel the resistance? Good, now when you're ready, you're gonna press that foot out in front of you and you hold it there. All right, so straighten your leg as much as you can, even if you've got to lower it a little bit. You could have a strap or a towel behind your leg here to hold it up. Good, take one more deep breath in, really press through your heel, pull your toes back, and then exhale, put your heel on the floor in front of you. Beautiful, so you've got your legs straight and you've got your foot flattened out in front of you in that dorsiflexion, all right? So sitting yourself up tall, just take that right arm up over your head. Good, now when you're ready, make a big arc out in front of you and reach down to touch your leg. Right, your hamstrings will tell you when to stop or where to stop and then come up tall. Move through it like that one more time, reaching down towards your leg, leaning on that left knee and come up tall. Good, this time we'll hold it at the bottom. Are you ready? Draw those lower abdominals in. Let your hand land on your leg. Good, look right up towards your foot because that's the direction that you're moving, right? You don't necessarily have to touch it. It might be your final goal. It might be your, your objective. But remember, if your knee starts to bend or your foot drops out of alignment, you went a little too far. Back it up and just get comfortable with your range of motion. You might find it's different on the other side. Good, and bring it up tall. Now, stretching through the hip. One of the things about stretching through the hips is it can put too much stress on your knee. So if you do have a hip issue or a knee issue, cross it low down here. You can move through all these stretches with this foot crossed down on top of its partner. Or you can bring this foot up a little higher. Ah, excellent. So start with a nice tall posture here. Go draw those lower abdominals inward. And we're all going to take that right knee and pull it across toward the opposite shoulder or the opposite knee. So if you're down low, it's just here. You could add a little bit more intensity to that stretch by turning your shoulders toward the right side and you feel how it moves through the outside of your thigh. Think about your iliotibial band and down into your hip socket here. Good. Take a deep breath in. Nice tall posture. And then exhale, turn back to center and drop that knee down. Good. Now, a forward fold here. I want you to resist the urge to slump or slouch into this. I want you to keep your spine long and then lean your body out towards your knee. Right? So if it's low, you're here. And you'll still feel that stretch down through your hip socket into your lower back, but within your safe range. Good, try to keep your head lifted. Take a couple breaths into the stretch. Then come up tall, step it down, we'll do the whole thing on the other side. So I recommend these stretches anytime. I say do this series every day, right? Even if you just did a walk or mowed your lawn, um, or didn't do anything at all, right? This is still a good way to release tension out of your body. Keep your blood flowing, keep your joints loosened up. And you know that if you do have arthritic conditions, keeping everything moving is half the battle. Once you get it loosened up, it feels a little bit better. So this is a really safe and quick way to keep your body limber. Good, toes toward the floor. 
Remember, you can have a towel or a strap behind your leg here to keep it lifted if that feels better for you. And then just get rid of it when you don't need it anymore. And flex at the ankle. Good, you're ready. Now push your foot out in front of you and bend your knee. And do it again, straighten the leg. Bend the knee and this time we'll hold it out there for that static stretch. So you're lengthening, sitting up tall. Good, pushing through your heel. One more deep breath in. And then exhale your heel to the floor. Good, getting into your tall posture. Leg is straight, foot is flat. You're gonna lean onto that right leg, left arm up. And then reach down to touch that leg. And come back up tall. Good, do it like that again. Finding your range, how far can you reach? And this time we'll let the hand rest on the leg. Okay, take a couple deep breaths here, right? If you can move out a little closer to your foot without compromising your form and alignment, reach a little further. It's good to have goals. And then come up tall. Now you choose your option, crossing it low or crossing it high and sitting up tall. Beautiful. So here we go, drawing that knee inward, working on the stretch down through the outside of the thigh and into the glutes. Maybe adding a little bit of a turn. Well, but if it's not good for your spine or if it feels too intense, you don't have to add the turn. It's just a progression. Good, one more deep breath in. And back to center, dropping that knee down. Good, now remember chin up, eyes forward and leaning out toward that leg to feel that nice deep stretch through your hip socket and into your lower back. Excellent. And come on up and step it down. Good, let's move into the upper body. So we're out toward the front of our chair, All right? You're gonna take your hands and reach back for the back of your chair. So one on either side, right? Keep them down low. If they're up so too high, your shoulders are round forward and your body will want to tip. So bring them down low enough that you feel like you can sit up tall because you're going to roll your shoulders back and you're going to lift your chest up toward the ceiling. Good, so you're lifting your gaze. Maybe just look into the top of the wall. But really thinking about feeling the stretch across your chest muscles. Feeling your shoulder blades soften toward the center of your body. Sliding down your back. Nice chest stretch, good. Give me one more deep breath in. Lift your chest a little higher toward the ceiling. And then exhale, bringing your head to center, releasing your arms, and then lacing your fingers back behind your head. Good, so make a little brace for your neck, support system for your head and your neck, and pull your elbows back. Good, get your lower abdominals anchored in. Now you've got this brace for your neck, and just let your head drop back against your hands. Right, so creating a little spinal extension through your neck, but playing it safe by creating that support system with your hands. Good, keep lifting up through your chest. Good, take one more deep breath in, pull your elbows back, and exhale, bring it to center. Good, arms up, tricep stretch. Take that right hand, either touch the back of your head and bring this arm around here, or you can reach a little lower and over the top of your head whichever one feels better for you. And if you want to deepen that stretch, just tilt it a little bit. Good. Come up tall, arms up and switch it out. Choose your option. It could be here or here. And it could go a little deeper. <sighs> Good, again, this little segment of stretches is meant to do any time of day, after any kind of activity. And arms up, and down. Good, take one deep breath in to reach. And exhale your arms down the sides. Good, lean onto your knees, and just let your back rest out. Beautiful. So remember to stay hydrated. I know that when we're at home all day long, it's easy to forget to drink water. So as ever, I always use that 64 ounces, that half gallon as a guideline. Um, get yourself a 64 ounce container. All right, fill it up in the morning. Uh, it's a little better for you to drink your water room temperature. Right? Your body doesn't have to work as hard to warm it before you digest it. Um, I know some of you do prefer cold water, but um, room temperature water is really the way to go. So make sure you're getting at least a half gallon, if not more, every single day. So 
Anyway, take any of these segments, put them together, go back through the previous listings. We've got some full classes in there, but I think going forward, we're just going to see some more of these shorter segments. I feel like it's more practical for all of us. And then you can mix and match them depending on what you're doing and, and how much time you have. All right, so again, call me, email me, reach out. Hopefully we're going to be getting back together for some outdoor classes soon. Um, so that should be fun. I'm looking forward to it. I'll keep you posted. Take care.